Updates for you tonight. Crews are responding right now to a new fire start tonight in Yellowstone National Park. The ash fire is at the heart of the American West lies an unsettling breakthrough. The sprawling caldera of Yellowstone National Park has registered over 80,000 earthquakes in recent years, prompting extraordinary caution from federal agencies. This region, shimmering with geysers and steaming vents, has long been the site of subtle, persistent geological stirrings. But what is now claimed as a massive uptick in underground seismicity raises hard questions about what may be coming and what the United States government means when it appears to shut down such a space. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. This seismic frenzy did not develop overnight. Beneath the surface of Yellowstone lies the enormous magma chamber, the remnant of ancient supervolcanic eruptions that shaped the region. For decades, scientists monitored dozens, sometimes hundreds of small earthquakes per year. Yet a new wave of detection, backed by artificial intelligence and enormous seismological databases, has uncovered tens of thousands more events than previously cataloged. According to one report, more than 86,000 earthquakes were detected beneath Yellowstone between 2008 and 2022 using AI-enhanced techniques. Those numbers exceed previous expectations by an order of magnitude, while official monitoring by the United States Geological Survey USGS still lists seismicity as background and normal. The sheer volume of previously hidden quake clusters has raised both alarm and curiosity. The notion of the U.S. shutting down Yellowstone suggests something other than mere park closure. It indicates a recognition by federal authorities that conditions may have shifted from routine monitoring into a realm of heightened risk. If an active magma chamber is showing signs of increased agitation, even if still subtle, the implications ripple far beyond the park's boardwalks and picnic areas. The idea that something massive is coming reflects a fear deeply rooted in the history of the place. Yellowstone is not just any national park. It overlies one of the most geologically potent zones on Earth. To understand what may be brewing, one must journey beneath Yellowstone's surface. The magma chamber that lies beneath the caldera is vast, and although it does not behave like a ticking time bomb, its past tells of eruptions that reshaped continents. The last true super-eruption occurred roughly 631,000 years ago and subsequent much smaller but still large eruptions happened 70,000 years ago or so. Today, the chamber remains partially molten, its heat driving the unique thermal features above ground. Geyser basins, hot springs, and fumaroles. The ground above shifts, uplifts, and subsides as magma moves, melts rock, or releases gases. Earthquakes accompany these changes, faults crack, fluids move, stresses adjust. What does it mean when the quake count crosses into tens of thousands? One possibility is that the subsurface plumbing, the network of fissures, faults, and fluid pathways, is becoming more active. At Yellowstone, recent studies show that many of the new detection quakes occur along rougher, younger fault lines inside the caldera rather than the smoother, older ones. That suggests the system is not simply easing into equilibrium. It might be shifting into a different regime of strain release. When fault systems transmit fluids, magma, or CO2, the result can be hundreds or thousands of small pulses rather than one giant surge. But cumulatively, such pulses may signal that the subterranean heat engine is changing its behavior. Another factor is ground deformation. GPS and satellite measurements track how the caldera floor rises or falls. According to the USGS monthly update from October 2025, deformation was recorded. Since late May, the surface had risen about 1.5 centimeters, roughly half an inch atop a longer-term trend of slow subsidence. Even such modest uplift matters. It means the underlying magma reservoir or hydrothermal system is pressurizing or changing fluid volumes. Combine that with the quake swarm data, and one builds a picture of a system becoming more restless. What are the implications of this restlessness? First, the possibility of a large volcanic eruption inevitably looms in the public imagination. A classic super-eruption at Yellowstone would cast enough ash and ejecta to disrupt large swaths of North America and even the global climate for years. While the odds of that occurring in the near future are extremely low, the fact that seismic and deformation signs are mounting may indicate that the system's behavior is becoming more dynamic than thought. The phrase, something massive is coming, does not have to mean a cataclysm tomorrow. 
but it does suggest that the geological state may be entering a phase where the chance of larger events, or at least more energetic ones, is higher than baseline. Second, even absent a full-blown volcanic blast, increased seismicity and geothermal activity carry major implications for society. Yellow. Stone sits atop an environment that powers national tourism, ecosystem services, and geothermal phenomena. If a seismic swarm or shallower magma intrusion causes ground fractures, hydrothermal explosions, or widespread geyser modifications, the risk extends to infrastructure, ecology, and public safety. Roads, bridges, buildings, all of which are designed for normal Yellowstone behavior, may be vulnerable if the ground beneath them changes more rapidly than expected. Third, there is the issue of early warning and risk management. Authorities must decide when to escalate alerts, close areas, evacuate or monitor more intensely. The term shut down may imply a decision to restrict access or prepare for potential hazard. For a national park, that means redirecting hundreds of thousands of visitors, halting concessions and lodging operations, and altering airspace or civil defense planning. The magnitude of such disruption is large not only locally but nationally, for Yellowstone is a symbol, a tourist magnet, a fundamental part of America's national park heritage. Another implication lies in scientific understanding itself. If 80,000 plus quakes occurred but remained undetected until the advent of AI, it suggests that our monitoring regime may be underestimating subsurface activity at many volcanic and geothermal systems worldwide. That means risk assessments, hazard models, and purportedly dormant volcanoes may need rethinking. The line between normal background and heightened risk may blur when new data reveals a hidden volume of seismic churn. In that vein, consider how these quakes are distributed over time and space. They reportedly cluster in swarms rather than isolated events. Swarms are typically groups of numerous small quakes over days or weeks, often without a clear main shock. In Yellowstone's case, many events previously overlooked are now being revealed, and the implication is that the subterranean plumbing is not just leaking steadily, but ramping up in pulses. Fluid movement, rock cracking, magma injection, all these processes generate quake swarms. If that activity persists or intensifies, the system may approach thresholds hitherto unseen in modern monitoring. Turning to the cumulative effect, when an area accumulates tens of thousands of small seismic events, the total energy release may be significant. While each quake might be modest magnitudes of 3, 4, together they may alter stress fields, open new fractures, or alter permeability in the rock. That means the path is being paved for possibly larger events, either earthquake-type failures or volcanic unrest. The geological phrase loading the spring comes to mind. The rock is storing energy, fluid pressure is building, pathways open. When the next pop occurs, it might be stronger than expected. Geographically, Yellowstone is enormous, spanning parts of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, and includes the massive Yellowstone caldera, as well as numerous volcanic vents and hydrothermal areas. Its vastness means that hazards are multifocal. They could originate from the center of the caldera, from flank zones, from hydrothermal explosion sites, or along fault lines. The 80,000 plus quake figure may represent multiple loci of unrest, rather than a single epicenter, which complicates prediction and hazard zoning. For authorities, that means a multi-layered challenge. Which part of Yellowstone is waking up, how fast, and to what scale? Underlying all of this is an ominous narrative. The U.S. government's decision to restrict or shut down access to Yellowstone signals that monitoring agencies believe the hazard status is elevated. Whether that means evacuation readiness, heightened alert levels or outright access closures, it amounts to the conclusion that geological risk is no longer abstract. Something may be brewing. While official classifications still list the alert level at normal with an aviation code of green, the data stream suggests the possibility of escalation exists. The tension lies between nothing imminent and signs of increased activity. A difficult boundary to manage. For society at large, the sheer scope of Yellowstone's potential hazard means that what happens there does not stay there. A large eruption would spew ash across the continent, disrupt air travel, damage infrastructure, and force mass evacuations. Even lesser events, hydrothermal explosions, lava intrusions, ground subsidence, could have immediate regional impact. 
The decision to shut down is not merely about tourists. It is about preparedness for cascading effects that reach far beyond the park's gates. Emergency management agencies must grapple with scenarios rarely rehearsed in modern times. Moreover, the economic stakes are high. Yellowstone attracts millions of visitors each year, supports local businesses, and forms a critical part of the regional tourism economy. Shutting down the park or key portions of it affects lodging, transportation, guided tours, and whole communities. For the federal government, closing an asset like Yellowstone is not taken lightly. It reflects both risk management and preemptive action. The public image of a park closure ties into wider perceptions of safety, geology, and national readiness. If Yellowstone is seen as dangerous, visitor behavior, insurance policies, and national park funding priorities may shift dramatically. From a geological point of view, Yellowstone offers one of the most accessible windows into supervolcanic processes. The fact that scientists detected tens of thousands more earthquakes than previously shows that our models and instruments are catching up, but also that we may have been complacent. If hidden swarms were running for years under our radar, then similar systems elsewhere might also hold thousands of undetected events. That invites a reassessment of hazard across the volcanic world. Are there other Yellowstone-style hot zones behaving quietly beneath our feet? The human dimension also matters. For the average visitor, the idea that a park could be shut down for geological upheaval may sound sensational. Yet it underscores the reality that landscapes we treat as static are dynamic, alive. That tension between the familiar, pristine forests, thermal pools, wild bison, and the deep, restless earth beneath is amplified by these seismic numbers. People may visit Yellowstone for leisure today, but tomorrow's landscape might be wholly different. The recognition of that shift fosters both fascination and fear. There is also a psychological component. Large numbers, 80,000 quakes, trigger visceral responses. Even if most of those quakes were minute, the sheer magnitude conveys a narrative of waking power. When authorities respond with shutdowns or restricted access, it reinforces the public sense that something big may be in motion. In media coverage, the phrase, something massive is coming, resonates precisely because it taps into both geological plausibility and existential uncertainty. On a scientific communication front, the challenge lies in managing expectations and avoiding panic. Although the possibility of a cataclysm exists, the probability remains low in the short term. Fixating on the next eruption may overshadow more immediate risks, a hydrothermal explosion, infrastructure damage, or more frequent small quakes. For decision makers, conveying uncertainty while preparing for high impact, low probability events is delicate. The decision to shut down Yellowstone suggests an escalation from watch to action that must be communicated with clarity and calm. The very definition of massive deserves consideration. It might mean a super eruption, but it could also mean a smaller eruption than the 630-000 year old one, or a series of geothermal collapses, or significant ground deformation leading to park closures and landscape changes. For local communities and the nation, recognizing what massive might look like is critical. After all, even lesser volcanic events at Yellowstone would pose unprecedented challenges. In the context of Yellowstone's history, the region has undergone cycles of activity, large eruptions, periods of dormancy, and smaller volcanism and hydrothermal activity connecting the epochs. The current phase may represent a transition. If magma is intruding, if fluids are moving, if fault systems are primed, then the hidden beehive of activity may awaken with more than just typical tremors. Future signs might include increased deformation, uplift or subsidence, heightened gas emissions, changing hydrothermal behavior, and seismic swarms with higher magnitudes. In effect, the 80,000 figure may be a prelude, not the climax. One cannot ignore either the broader implications for global volcanic hazard. Yellowstone is unique in many respects, but it is not alone in hosting massive magma chambers or supervolcanic potential. If monitoring improvements reveal that other systems likewise host tens of thousands of small quakes previously unobserved, then global risk landscapes may require revision. The Yellowstone scenario may serve as a bellwether, a signal that hidden unrest is more common than realized. 
From Iceland to Indonesia, the world may need to reconsider the silent volcanoes. Moreover, there's the infrastructure dimension. Highways, pipelines, power grids, water systems. Rough terrain makes Yellowstone a remote oasis. The concept of shutdown therefore may be layered. First, restricting access to parts of the park. Second, full closure of major zones. Third, issuing national alert. That sequence underscores how even modest but persistent signals can escalate into full precautionary response. The ripple effect on neighboring states and communities cannot be overstated. Yellowstone lies across Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, but its footprint touches tens of millions of people via air travel, travel tourism, and downstream ecosystems. A major event in Yellowstone could produce ash plumes crossing the continental United States, grid disruptions, agriculture impacts, water supply issues from sediment-laden rivers, and economic shock from tourism losses. The decision to shut down access foresees not just local disruption but national consequences. It is also a reminder that our concept of wilderness is not free of risk. Yellowstone is iconic for its beauty, wildlife, and geothermal wonders, but beneath all that, lies a supervolcanic engine. When the tremors go from dozens to tens of thousands, the boundary between natural marvel and natural menace blurs. Visitors come to witness Old Faithful, bison herds, the Grand Prismatic Spring, but they walk on top of one of Earth's most active volcanic systems. The transition from appreciation to caution is subtle but real. There is a pressing need for enhanced preparedness. Governments and agencies must revisit hazard models, evacuation routes, visitor protocols, infrastructure resilience, insurance schemes, and public communication. Shutting down a national park for geological risk remains an unusual decision, yet it may become more common as monitoring reveals hidden unrest. The Yellowstone case may become a blueprint for future decisions when monitoring shows hidden seismicity crossing threshold, when deformation and quakes align, when access must be restricted before a large event manifests. On the scientific front, the eruption of massive amounts of data via AI means that geology is entering a new phase. Systems once thought benign may now be seen as active markets of subterranean stress rather than silent lava chambers. In Yellowstone's case, the 80-000 plus earthquake suggest that what we considered background noise is potentially part of a larger process. The shutdown thus may be as much about acknowledging new scientific understanding as about immediate hazard. One must consider the intangible, the awe and humility inspired by a place like Yellowstone, now tinged with uncertainty. For generations, visitors came to a safe enough wilderness, but the possibility that the earth might remind us of its power changes the narrative. When authorities shutter a national park, not for weather, fire, or flood, but for subterranean rumblings, it is a sobering message. Nature's timeline is deep, its forces immense, and our vantage fleeting. In that sense, Yellowstone's moment is not just about an impending event, it is about shifting perspective. The tremors are a language of the earth speaking beneath quiet forests and steaming hot springs. The decision to close or restrict access is our response to that language. Whether something massive becomes a volcanic eruption, large-scale seismic event, hydrothermal collapse, or a chain of smaller disruptions, the seismic count of 80000 plus serves as a warning. The calm surface may hide more movement than ever before. The timeline ahead remains uncertain. The next few months or years could bring more swarms, uplift, or other signs that this system is evolving. Alternatively, the system may peter back into routine behavior. The shutdown decision suggests that authorities cannot rely on past routines. They must prepare for the unexpected. And for the nation, this moment marks one of those inflection points, where the window into Earth's subterranean power widens and our readiness for what lies beneath becomes consequential. In sum, Yellowstone's seismic awakening touches geology, risk, society, science, and perception all at once. The 80, 000 plus earthquakes are more than a statistic. They are a signpost. The American government's response underscores that this is no longer simply a tourist destination, but a monitored hazard zone with implications far beyond its boundaries. And while nobody is announcing a countdown to a specific eruption right now, the message is clear. Beneath the geysers and forests, something large may be stirring. And we must reckon with the possibility that the next chapter at Yellowstone will change more than the park. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us, what are your thoughts on Yellowstone's shutdown after 80,000 quakes? Major eruption coming? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.